Hey, it's me, Curtis P. It's been a big week for Apple as the company held its WWDC keynote on Monday. Some big announcements there for the iPhone, iPad, and the Mac. But I have iOS 14 running on my iPhone, so I wanted to run down some of my favorite things so far with iOS 14. So starting off on the home screen of the iPhone here, the biggest change overall is that widgets are now available right on the iPhone. So you can see I have a widget right at the top. Now you're used to seeing widgets right off to the left side, but now you can actually take those widgets and put them right onto your home screen. To find those widgets, you can just jump into the jiggle mode here, which of course has all of your apps jumping around. And there's a big plus button up on the top left. You can tap on that and you can actually get a preview of a bunch of different widgets, which you can add right to your home screen. You can even look at a bunch of them right down here. So if I want to add a music widget, I can tap on that. There are a bunch of different views. So there's some small, there's kind of a medium, and there's even a large widget here. What I can do is I can take this widget, press and hold, and then I can just put it pretty much anywhere on my home screen. Unfortunately, I can't put it in the bottom corner here, which is kind of annoying, but you can kind of put it anywhere there. I can also, of course, add another widget if I want. If I want this notes widget, I can take that and throw that onto my home screen as well. What's really cool here is you can actually even group widgets, which is what I have going on at the top of my display. If you just take one widget and the other, other widget and you put them on top of each other, they are now a group. So as you can see, I can swipe through these by just clicking my thumb up and down and uh, you can scroll between the widgets. I actually have a bunch of different widgets going on at the very top of my display here. So it's a nice option to have right here on the home screen. The other cool thing to note with this is because of these, what they're calling smart stacks, uh, iOS will actually pick the appropriate widget to show me at the appropriate time. So recently it's been showing me just my calendar a lot of the time because it's the end of the day. During lunch, which is when I normally go for my run, usually my activity monitor will be coming up here. And then towards the end of the day or even the beginning of the day, my music tends to show up first. So it's kind of nice to have that. iOS will just pick widgets accordingly that it thinks uh, best fit the current time. You can even go in and edit a stack if you want to, so I can change the order of them. If I want my music at the top, I can totally do that. You can even turn off Smart Rotate if you uh, don't want that as a function. Next up, let's talk about organizing your apps because in the past, as you can see, you've always had, of course, your apps on the home screen. You've got folders of apps, and of course you have multiple pages of apps. But what you have now is our brand new app library. So if you swipe all the way to the right, you now get a full list of all of the installed apps that are on your device here. So what I can see is they're all kind of broken up into different folders. iOS just auto generates these and you can actually tap in and see what's inside of those. And at the very top, there's even suggested apps or recently added apps, just so you can quickly jump into those if you want to. It's kind of a nice feature. You can see everything installed right here. A lot of these apps I actually don't even have on my home screen. A way to do that, as you can see here, I have the Uber app installed on this home screen. I can tap and hold. I can then touch on the dots at the very bottom and you get these edit page menu. So what I can actually do, if you have a page full of apps that are old and useless and you don't really care about them, just turn it off. You can just click that button. I can turn the Uber app page off. And now if I hit done and the page, yep, that's fine. Uh, it's actually gone. That page is completely gone with Uber on it, but Uber is still installed. What I can do is I can just uh, swipe down and find a full list of all of the installed apps that I have in alphabetical order. Or of course, I can just search here and find, not Uner, Uber. There we go. Uber is still installed on my phone if I want to get to it. If I want to get that home screen back, I can just again press and hold, turn that home screen back on, and now that home screen has been re-enabled. So a nice feature to clean up stuff that you don't really want on your home screen anymore. As you can see here, um, I actually don't have a lot of apps that are on my home screen. I've mainly been just using the app library because if I need it, it's right there. I can also easily, of course, search for something at any time. Next up, a great feature that I haven't actually been able to test out is app clips. So if you ever find yourself needing to pay for a parking ticket or you need to download an app just to do one simple little thing, hopefully in the future, you'll be able to actually just have an app clip installed. This is a very small version of the application with very direct sort of instructions built into it. So you can just open it up, pay for your parking ticket, and then close the app. You don't even have to worry about installing the full app. And after a certain amount of time, if you don't use the app clip ever again, it will just uninstall itself from your phone, which is great to hear. I personally hope that a a lot of ticketing based services have this because I find I don't fly that often, but then I'm always installing the airlines app. And then like a couple days later, I'm uninstalling the app. 
So I would love to just have an app clip. I'll install it and then it can just uninstall itself because I'm not gonna use it after a couple of days. Next, another great addition inside of iOS 14 is its new compact design for certain things, including incoming calls and Siri. So if I bring up Siri on my device here, you'll actually notice that it just shows up as a little orb. What's the weather? It's gonna now get my weather, obviously. Boom, it shows it right at the top of the display. Now the thing is, it doesn't look like it is taking over the display, but if I try to interact, you'll notice that Siri just disappears instantly. So it's kind of a little deceiving, but it is nice to see that Siri is a little less intrusive into your life. Especially when it comes to the iPad, Siri will only appear in the bottom corner of the device. Another great way to see the compact UI is when an incoming call is happening. So similar to what's happening here at this FaceTime call, it just pops down like a notification. You can accept it or decline it right there or even just swipe it away and the call will keep ringing but it won't take over your entire phone at the same time. This also expands across all applications that do phone calls. So I've been using Slack a lot since I've been working from home and the Slack UI does the same thing. It just pops down uh, and then you can accept it or decline it at that time. So after talking about the compact UI, another great addition here is the ability to actually set your own default mail app or browser app right on the device. Yes, that's right. You no longer have to use mail or Safari as your dedicated email and browser application if you want. You'll be able to change that over to Chrome or maybe Gmail if you'd rather that. I haven't tested that out on my phone yet. I don't think it's fully functioning and I don't really use any of those apps anyway, but it's a great addition and I definitely wanted to highlight it here. Another great new accessibility feature that I've been using a lot is a thing called back taps. So what happens is I can double tap on the back of my phone and it will actually activate a certain feature. So here a double tap brings down my notification shade. If I do something like a triple tap, it'll actually open up a search bar, which is useful if I'm inside of an app and I wanna do like a universal search across the whole device, I can do a triple tap and there it is, opens up my search bar. I can instantly search and jump into a new app. It's a nice feature to have and you can set it to really anything you want. To jump into that and change the setting, you jump into settings itself. You can scroll up here. We're gonna go into accessibility and then we are actually gonna go into touch. At the very bottom, you'll see back tap and I have them set, like I said, to double tap to the notification center and a triple tap into spotlight but you can set it to a number of different features inside of here. You can even set it to shortcuts, which is really nice. So if you build a custom shortcut to do something, you can set a back tap to actually activate that. A great way and thing to do with that would be maybe to activate the Google Assistant, kind of a fun thing to do, or you could do a quick Siri shortcut to actually open up the camera if you wanted to. There's a lot of variety that you can do with it and it's cool that it's customizable. I especially like it for the notification shade because I don't have to reach all the way up to the top of the device. Another great addition that's already available on the iPad, but now on the iPhone is picture in picture. So now when you come across a video, if you're uh, on the web like this, you're watching a video of maybe Apple's keynote, you can actually just tap on the little picture in picture button and boom, you will get this sort of pop over window. It stays on your screen. You can move it kind of wherever you want. I can make it a little bit smaller, stick it up in the corner. I can make it bigger again if I want to, put it down here. And if I want to do something else, I can actually just slide it over off to the side. It's just kind of off to the side. I would still be able to hear it though. So very similar to what we already have on the iPad and a nice new feature to have on the iPhone as well. Another thing to note about that is that also works with FaceTime calls. So if you're in the middle of a FaceTime call and you wanna jump in and do something else on your device, you can now just do that. You can just swipe up, go home. The FaceTime call will just sort of minimize itself. It'll be a picture in picture mode with FaceTime, which is awesome. And the last three things I wanted to talk about here are smaller, but they are also still great. So if I jump into messages here, another new thing is emoji search. So you'll actually be able to search for different emojis right on the basic keyboard. Awesome to see. Uh, right now it doesn't appear to be working for me, which isn't great if I try to type something. Doesn't seem to wanna bring up any results, but that's a beta for you. So it's in the works and hopefully it will work again soon. Next up is the brand new Translate app built into iOS 14. So if I go and take a look and open that guy up, basically it allows you to convert a number of different languages into another different language here. So what I can do is just speak into my iPhone or you can type and it should convert it into French for me. So let's see how that works, if it even works well. Hey, it's me, Curtis P. It's a beautiful day outside and it's sunny and I'm having a great time. And it should automatically convert that. Et c'est moi Curtis P. 
C'est une belle journée dehors et il fait beau et je m'amuse. Sure, I have no idea if that's right. I don't speak French. I should, I'm Canadian, but I don't, so. Cool, it does a bunch of languages though, and uh, I'll leave it up to people who actually are bilingual to tell you if it works or not. <laughs> and last, there are some great security improvements built right into iOS to let you know kind of what's going on and allow you to keep track of apps and what they're doing. So if you jump into Instagram here and I try to take a new story, you'll notice that up above the signal bar, there is a new green dot. If I take a picture here and I actually swipe down into the control center, you'll see that it shows Instagram was recently using your camera. It's nice to be able to see that. And you'll notice that for notifications that have to do with your microphone as well. And also to go along with the camera and the microphone tracking, Apple is also showing you notifications when an app actually reads your clipboard. So a great example of that, if we go into Safari here, I grab the URL here and we jump into my Reddit client and I paste it, you'll see a notification at the top. It says Apollo pasted from Safari. It's great to know because in that case, I actually did want to paste it, but you'd be surprised by the number of applications which are reading your clipboard in the background. One of the big ones being TikTok, which recently had an issue where when you installed iOS 14 and you opened TikTok, it was constantly reading your clipboard. So, um, not a good thing. I don't know why it was doing that, probably data harvesting of some form, but it's nice to see that Apple is uh, working in some way to actually help make the user aware of when their camera, microphone, and their clipboard is being used. So that's my first look at iOS 14 running on an iPhone 11 Pro. Would I recommend you running this on your own device? No, the battery life is horrible and I've had a number of crashes, so probably not something you're gonna wanna do. But hey, it's really cool to see what Apple has in store for us coming this fall. It'll be a free update for everyone, so look out for it in the fall. But with that, I have another great video for you right here, so make sure you check that out. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.